Punk, what, what, where'd she go? Oh, there she is. Hey, Pumpkin. Pumpkin, where are you going? Come back, Pumpkin. Where are you going to run? Do you want to say hi? No, you just feel like playing, huh? That's fine. Playing's fun. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Needle palms are looking pretty good, considering the, well, not even considering the cold, just in general. Looking pretty good. Big, green, and lush. That has nothing to do with anything. Not that that matters. I don't have a strict direction for today's vlog because, you know, it's winter. Where'd all that algae come from? I just did a water change in here. The joys of fish tanks. There's always algae. Is that satisfying? Are you enjoying that? Some nice scrapage. Getting that gunk off the glass. That's not, we don't need to do that right now. It's winter. There's not a ton to do. Would like to go outside and play in the garden, but you know, it's 27 degrees, so... Not a whole lot to do out there. I suppose there's always something to do outside, but I don't want to, because it's cold. That's not really gonna stop me though. There are a few things that I need to do. One is that it's time to get down or to spray some more anti-transpirant on the plants and anti-desiccant the welt stop, but my sprayer's broken. I'd run to the hardware store, pick up a new sprayer, might look at some plants, figured I'd do the intro now so I can bring y'all along. Maybe there'll be something to show. Maybe there won't be, I don't know. Remember to grab a couple more of these light bulbs, these things, really nice. They're crazy bright, like the burn your eyes out bright. Nice for filming though. Out in the grow space, I have a spot where I wanna set some more of those up. None of the pets are around, everybody's sleeping. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. You feed them and they run off like you don't exist anymore. As soon as they get the food in their stomach, they're done. So yeah, we'll go to the hardware store. Hey, we'll have everybody here. Internet, great place to get opinions. Hardwood floors, what are we thinking? Yes, I do like the tile. Carpet's gotta go. It's old and it's gross and have been thinking that it might be nice to just do hardwood across the entire first floor here. I do like the marble in there. It would be weird to have marble and then hardwood and then tile. Oh, we could do hardwood all the way through and leave the marble. No, I think it would be better. Like the house would have a better flow if it was all. Let me know. Have to be something. <laughs> it'd have to be something with some texture on it. Hi, Turbo. You really came in full blast, didn't you? Want your toy pumpkin? You want it? Want it? Here you go. No, that was a bad throw. It's because I did it like this because I'm holding. The... I'm sorry. All right, we'll try again. Get back to the hardwood conversation in just a second. Ready? Ready? Go get it. Okay. It need to be something with some texture to it and some grip because, you know, Toby's getting older. I don't like the dog slipping all over the place. That makes me feel bad for him. Yeah, I think it might be... Oh, speaking of Toby. Is that Toby? Hey, Tobes! Hello! That was quite the entrance. How you doing, baby? Hey, Toby. Come down to say hi to everybody. That's nice of you. Very enthusiastic entrance. Why, right when I'm getting ready to go somewhere. Now all of a sudden everybody wants attention. All right. All right I have carpet samples here. Textured non-textured, something with a nice plush high pile to it, or heavy pile. But yeah, I figure as far as updating the house grows, hardwood might be the way to go. Comment down below, let me know. I'm gonna play with these guys for a while because clearly they'd like some attention. We'll cut back at the hardware store. You'd think I'd have it remembered by now, but as soon as I pull in and I see that the garden gates are closed, I'm always like, what the, why? What's going on? And it takes me a second to reset and go, oh yeah, it's January and it's 40 degrees outside. There aren't any plants outside to look at. <sighs> there are a lot of people here, which is fine. People are great. But when it comes to talking to the camera, I'm not that good at it. Not when there are a lot of other people around anyways. Plants, briefly, because music in here is very loud. And uh, I don't really know if any of this is vlog worthy because it's just, I mean it's just like some pothos some chafleras got painted cactus got some hurricane ferns those are cool and some nice looking begonias some rex begonias love the leaves on those I'm in a Boston fern that one's neat got a nice crinkly texture to it and some good looking Boston ferns that were back there oh those are nice some great big nice cactus balls yeah spring's coming love seeing the seeds out of course all these stupid f***ing things. Why? Stop it. I will admit, the Baltic blue epiprenums have been growing on me. I don't know why. I think I've just been seeing them around enough that like, they're standing out more. There's nothing blue about these, but I imagine with the right light and size, they get a nice sheen to them. Maybe more of a gray tone. I like the cuts in those leaves. Looks cool. Yeah, Home Depot is a flop. I'm sure they have sprayers in that store somewhere, but I couldn't find them anywhere. That's better. So many more plants. They rearranged over there and I didn't like it at first, but it's starting to grow on me. 
Let's see here. We got the bleach and more Roundup. That's a good price for a one gallon sprayer. It's an even better price for a two gallon sprayer. I'm thinking this must be a Lowe's brand. That looks that looks an awful lot like the Lowe's symbol there, doesn't it? Looks good enough to me. Yeah, that'll do. Don't need anything fancy for some anti-transpirant. So some of these other ones look pretty nice. Got that 200 series sprayer with the flat button. Oh, actually, huh. I'm getting the fancy one. I like that it has a pressure release valve, which is also on some of the ones that were a little bit less than this. It's the flat bottom. I can't stand the sprayers. They're always flipping and flopping all over the place. This will hold still. Hopefully, ideally, I don't know, we'll see. Doesn't matter, this video is not about sprayers. Hey, is that a minima? Look at that, it is. Hadn't been seeing these at Lowe's before. I'm sure they've been around and just haven't noticed them. It's a decent sized looking breath of Fora too. Looks pretty good. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, I should get it just because I love the leaves on these and I have to remind myself, hey, you already have one and it's a decent size. I don't need another one, but it's just, it's so stinking cute in that little pot. And yeah, here you go, there's the well, it's not the rest. There are a fair amount of plants here, but you get it. Blathias, Dracenas, Sansevierias, more Dracenas, Ravens, at the Sagos, and just, you know, lots of tabletop stuff. Little baby Maranta. Marantas are nice. Good amount of clearance stuff over here. I'm surprised these things were in clearance. I was here last week when they were unpacking these. They just got them in. That's weird. What did... who... What is this? Looks like a philodendron of some sort. I don't see a tag on it anywhere. A philodendron with a hosta growth habit on it. Is there anything over here? Nope, just says philodendron simp ill. For what that's supposed to mean, it's hanging out down here with the silver swords, which are looking beautiful. Nice leaves on those. Or, uh, moonlights. Skin depths, it's moonlights. It's really gonna bug me. What is that philodendron? These look like the epiprenums over here. Yeah. Baltic blues. Is there another one? Could just be a weird looking global, that was like, it's coming up all funny. Baltic blue, lovely calathea, so pretty. Beautiful leaves on those calatheas. More raphidophoras, adansonis. It's making me happy seeing these things at the big box stores finally. The twisty, Dracaena, Janet Craig over there. Super blue epiprenum, love seeing those around. Some hoyas, pearls and jade pothos. That's a thick hoya. Looks good. I don't see any other philodendrons over here that look anything like whatever the heck this thing is. Comment down below if you know. I'm not particularly fond of it, <laughs> to be honest, but I'm just curious. Lots of succulents and all kinds of things in their little decorative planters. Gonna head out. I think I have to go to Sam's. Sometimes they have some pretty good deals on bulbs this time of year. So if they do, I will... It probably won't be worth showing. Never mind. Good morning, pumpkin. Good morning, Turbo. Toby, everybody's here. Good morning. Oh, that was a loud yawn, Toby. I just <laughs> realized why there were so many people out yesterday because I forgot we were going to get snow. Here you go. Go play in the snow. Have fun. It's apparently, a very heavy snow. Really weighing the windmill palm down. It's 6 a.m. I don't know why I picked up the camera. Oh, that's why I picked up the camera. It's absolutely beautiful. Wet, sticky snow. Look at it on the pipe. Neither here nor there. Things to be done. Yeah, come on in. Good doggies. Good boys. Love when it's snowing outside and I can hang out in here with all the plants. Get some stuff done with the plants too. Not that I don't really have anything all that exciting to do. With the spider mite stuff that's going on, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's in last week's vlog. They're everywhere. Predator mites all over the place, hopefully taking care of the job. Need to give it a few weeks to see what's going to happen. But I really just don't think I should be doing a lot other than taking care of things up and until I see what's going on with that situation. I really, like really, really, really want to go to a nursery that's out here. It's called Plant Haven and just shop around and look at plants. But what's the point? I don't, it wouldn't be irresponsible to buy a plant and bring it in here right now. Because those spider mites, I swear every day I'm out here, I'm looking around, there, there's more, more and more and more. Despite the 61,000 predator mites that have been released, it's, it's, y'all, it's, nothing's happening. Trying to stay calm, maintain any level of panic that I feel going on because Y'all know, what I really wanted to do was just bug bomb the joint. Just throw off a bug bomb, problem solved. You know, toxicity, not great for the plants. It's, yeah, 
Blech. All important things to keep in mind. This is also like a good way to show on the channel what you might be expecting if you have an outbreak. To back it up, I did start releasing the predator mites well before it was a serious problem. Like months before it was a serious problem. I saw a few spider mites on one plant and just went ham with them. Progression is still going on, but I'm not seeing them in places where I would expect to be seeing them like on new foliage on uh, some of the plants where I put a lot of the spider mites. Here's a fresh leaf opening up here on this Longiloba. Nothing, don't see any spider mites on there, but they seem to be getting worse on the leaves that I just dumped predator mites. And look at all that webbing. Once the webbing's there, from everything I've read, the predator mites can't even get to the spider mites. That webbing wasn't there before, which means they're just getting worse in spots where I've dumped tons of them. I think I said originally that I was gonna give it two weeks which I know is not a lot of time, but I've been doing this for several months now. And, uh, oh, there's a flower on one of the orchids. I'll show, I'll show it to you in a second. So another week, maybe two weeks to see what happens. And if that doesn't do it, I got it. I got to do something more extreme. I can't just sit back and watch my entire plant collection just go to hell, right? Now I'm just keeping a close eye on things. Those leaves down there on that Longiloba I was just showing you, those, I'm just going to cut them off, even though there's tons of predator mites on them. They're, the webbing keeps the spider mites from being able to get in there, so that makes it kind of pointless, right? I'll go ahead and cut those off so that won't be an issue. I'll just cut them off, throw them away, and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna place another order for more predator mites. Not like 30,000 of them like I did before, where I was getting the adults and then the additional 30,000 of the eggs, but still, I wanna make sure that there are enough to get some more up high where the stuff just falls down. And we have to pull these plants down like this hibiscus. You can see there's some webbing on it and an outbreak of some other kind of critter that I can't make out because it's too tall and too far away. And the spider and the hibiscus, up, it, can, it can just grow. Anyways, this was really just intended to be an update. In some areas, it seems to be working, seems to be effective. In other areas, I'm not noticing any difference at all. The spider mites just seem to be getting worse. So I, I don't know. I feel like that's fairly useless information, but at least get to look at the plants. The freckle scrotum back here, going to be hard to see because it's just now emerging, but there's some tiny little green bits starting to push out on those stems that got pruned a few weeks ago. I'm happy to see that, see some action out of it. Oleander's got some buds on it. I did, that was another thing. I need to get more plants flowering out here because that usually draws the aphids in. And I'm curious as to what the aphids situation is like. That's when they always show up. But there's so many ladybugs out here, I'd be surprised if they're even or any uh, aphids. There's probably a few. But here's the orchid. Isn't that beautiful? You'd be able to tell if it would focus. There we go. That's a nice looking flower. It's a Violacea, Phalaenopsis orchid. This type, as long as you keep the humidity up and you keep the stem nice and green on it, they just keep flowering. This has had flowers on it for like, what, a year and a half, two years, something like that, at almost all times. There have been points where the flowers will fall off, but there's always a bud getting ready to pop open on that. It's a fun orchid to have around. It doesn't do the huge display of flowers. It's usually one at a time. They smell so nice and they're such a rich, deep purple. I don't even care that it's not a huge display of flowers. Seeing some new growth coming out from this philodendron down here, that's good. This is <laughs> one that came from Equigenera and wasn't looking too hot when it showed up, but it's got two new leaves opening up. I'm glad to see that. Albo popped open a new leaf maybe a week or two ago, something like that. I've been very surprised with the Albo. Really quick growers. I like that thing's popping new leaves op open left and right. I'm like stuttering with everything I'm saying because I'm trying to look about what to talk about next before I even finish my sentences. I know that that's probably not the way to do things. Something fun and exciting happening with the war oak up here. That's great, especially since that happened. Still don't know what it was that happened, but it did happen. So I'm gonna be happy to have some nice new leaves out of that one. Beachy Eye has been growing like a trooper. Not much out of the cross that's up there. Just been hanging out doing the same thing. Other than the spider mite situation, the plants are actually doing Fairly well, pretty good considering everything's been in here for a few months. New growth is what we always want to see. The Monstera just opened up this leaf right here about two weeks ago, and I can see another tip popping out in there. Probably not gonna, can, come on, get in there, get in there. Come on, can anybody see it? There we go. There's a little tip swelling up in there. That's gonna be shooting out a new leaf here pretty soon too. All right, everybody's updated. That's what's going on with the plants, the spider mite situation. Over here on the table, it's bugging me how empty it is, 
but like I said, I'm not gonna go buy plants with what's going on out here. That'd be irresponsible. Although the orchid shows this weekend, I might get some orchids. So if that happens, disregard everything I just said about being irresponsible. It's totally fine. Everything's fine. It's been three years. That, that's a long time. Haven't bought a bunch of orchids in a long time because, you know, COVID and then all the other stuff that's going on. Have a somatophyllum that I could move over here, but I don't, it actually, it seems pretty happy back there. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So for now, I'm just gonna leave this bee over here. I have this McDowell down here that does need to be bumped up to a larger container, but I feel like the airflow over here might be kind of extreme for it. Like the Stramanthes don't look great. Considering they have a 10,000 watt heater blowing on them most of the time, because winter, I think they're looking pretty good. One thing I have thought about doing is maybe even pulling these Stromanthi out of here, because there's one back there that just isn't looking too hot. I think the any plant back here that's kind of in this corner right here, kind of where that yellow is, right here. Those haven't been doing well, and I think it's just the croton's gotten very large and just not enough lights getting through to that little spot. I don't know if you remember, I had some plants that were up here for a while. Or no, it was a, I had another Alpinia that was over here. Not really the smartest place to put them with the hot dry air blowing down on top of everything, but I figured the humidity would make up for it. It kept, I'm sort of, not really though. I mean, it's pretty dry and crispy. It declined within a few weeks of me moving this croton up here. So I'm thinking uh, this little spot right here is not a great place for other plants because these aren't even plants that need a lot of light. I could hang another light, but I don't, I don't want to. There's already an awful lot of lighting out here. So I just don't see that being the move. What I'm thinking about doing is maybe pulling these two stromanthi up that are right here then putting longer cords in the bottom. These are just self-watering or it's really just cotton rope is all it is that wicks the moisture up from in here into the bottom of the container. I could make it longer. I could just set these on the side of the table, couldn't I? And just have the cord run over the edge of the pond into the water, but yes. I don't really see why not. It would open up some space and I could pull this Dromanthe that's not looking very good that's back there. I could pull that forward and maybe even move one of the Heliconias over because they're very shaded right now. Okay, I took a pause and tried to remember the reasons I was thinking of as to why I shouldn't do everything I was just talking about. And uh, that would be because I'm wondering if the reason that these aren't currently covered in spider mites, which I normally would expect them to be, might be because of all of the humidity and moisture that they're surrounded by and even just move. Like I, I'm thinking I probably just, I shouldn't move anything right now, which sucks. I would like to do some things with the plants, but hey, at least, I can sit out here and enjoy them and water them and prune on them <laughs> as I'm looking at a plant that has desperately, desperately needed to be pruned for like, what, two months? Yeah, I do a lot of pruning out here, don't I? It's hard to reach. I'll get to it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, talk myself out of it. Not, I'm not going to move that. I could maybe move this Stromanthe. No, because the heat, I have the heater up here. This, you don't know what I'm talking about? Hope I'm not making you dizzy. Right here, there's the heater. I have the vent blades angled slight, you're not supposed to angle them down too far, but the angle that they're at, <laughs> that they're pointing at, try to move this slow because I won't make anybody dizzy, blows right around here. So it's not hitting the plants as much as it was last year, which is fantastic because the four monstera would just be destroyed if that were happening. So I really don't think I should put anything right there. I have considered, I don't know if I should do this or not. Maybe I shouldn't keep talking about things that I don't know if I'm gonna do. I have a lot of pothos. Mostly the Munjulas, my favorites, and I was finding a lot of them last year, so I just kept buying them. I could put all my pothos on the front of this and put the cord in the bottom of those because they'll, they'll want to stay nice and moist. I'm just wondering if they'll crisp up. I could just take one. I have plenty and put it back there and just give it a week and see if the thing cooks. Yeah, it's a little experiment. I really shouldn't do that, should I? I want to. But you know what I should have done when I was at the store? I should have bought more pothos. What was I thinking? Also, I already had one that was over there and it, it did crisp up quite a bit, but it wasn't on the cord. Not that that's gonna make a difference for air that's blowing on it, but I, ugh. Over there on the shelf, from what I can tell, not seeing many spider mites at all. They don't seem to be drawn towards the metanilla, so it would seem fairly foolish to take a plant that's in an area that has plenty of spider mites and go introduce it to a spot where I'm not seeing them as a problem. Stupid bugs ruining my flow. That's not great either. Cutting off all that foliage that has the webbing on it, which might seem confusing. So I was just talking about giving it another week or two, but that's 
me referring to before moving on to something more extreme as far as pest control goes. So webbing, it from everything I've been told, really just having, once there's webbing, you need to clear it off because the predator mites just get locked up inside of it. I don't know if you can really see that very well, but there's webbing on all three of these larger leaves that are on here. So I'm going to cut those off with both hands so I can catch them and not just drop more spider mites all over the place, wrap those up, throw them out, and then, well, I, I don't know what you wanna do. Oh, hey, there's a fun little surprise. Got a volunteer impatient back there with the Heliconias. I love those impatients. I noticed those seedlings coming up about a, maybe a couple weeks ago. That's fun, gotta love impatience. There's some more over there. Also plants that tend to be spider mite magnets. That was something that I meant to mention with the Calathea, with the Shermanthes over there. You know that saying, don't punch a gift, you don't punch a gift, don't punch any horses. What is it? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Shermanthe, for me, or any Calathea type, even gingers, bananas, colocaceas, those are plants where if I have spider mites, these are the ones that are usually the problem and the hardest ones for me to get them off of. It's normally these that are the problem. They just, they freaking love these plants, but not seeing them on here. I mean, I'm not checking every single leaf meticulously, but by now I would expect to see webbing something of the sorts. There's lots of humidity over here, which we know spider mites don't like. In general, the growth space is already pretty humid with a lot of airflow, so the whole situation is weird to me to begin with. Maybe that's helping slow it down so the predators can do their thing. I don't know. That was another reason I was thinking that those should probably stay there. Uh, the yellow fusion calathea that's down here. Remember this one got moved into a self-watering pot over the summer? I haven't noticed any on this and it's over here in spider mite territory, but I don't know. Things don't always make sense. Okay, that's better. Got that pruned off. Pretty sure I mentioned one that's two hands so I could grab the leaves and get them right into the bag. I don't want them falling and just shaking more mites around all over the place. The impatience, uh, they tend to be spider mite magnets too, but I'm not seeing anything on them so far. Regardless, I need to order more predator mites because the spider mites, the, they're gonna start showing up on the new foliage. So I'm gonna have to keep adding them. That's fantastic. Gotta love that. This new leaf doesn't have anything on it that I can see either. I'm seeing plenty of the predator mites on everything, so that's good. Uh, the spider mites, I guess I'm not seeing them quite as much. It's just on certain specific plants. That's only a few weeks. Just gonna have to keep at it and stay patient and hope, hope the little guys are gonna do their job. <laughs> why did she, why do you do this pumpkin? She was sitting right here being so stinking cute. And the second I picked it up, she looked at me and she went, hell no bolted over there. Why? We all know you're a show-off pumpkin. Pumpkin, you're missing out on the cookie party. You know you're missing out. Got treats right over here, working on some positive reinforcement. If you just, you want to come over, get the treats. They're right there for you. There's a little catnip down there. Come on, you can do it. There we go. The power of treats. Come over here, have a cookie party. Show everybody what a brave little toaster you are. Get those cookies. Nice. About to place another predatory order just rounding things out so you'll know i didn't forget this sh also really come on it's expensive to be green isn't it so these right i forgot the new computer's not a touch screen uh i yet i keep doing it mealy bug destroyers it's a type of ladybug they show up i'll talk more about those and then another what twenty five thousand of the californicus predatory mites. I keep saying that should do it. I want to finish this up by saying that should do it. I don't, but maybe not. I don't know. It's a start. The actual main reason that I opened things up here was because I did want to talk about the chemicals. There are chemicals that you can use with predator mites, which I wasn't really aware of. One of you commented uh, a few weeks ago, Michael commented about using a something with the predator mites. And I was like, well, I hadn't really thought about that because, you know, I figured it would just kill the mites. But there are options. Nature's good guys. They have a whole bunch of stuff here to look at. They have a chart with what's compatible with what. I'm not really seeing anything here that would make sense to use for the mealybugs. There aren't a ton of mealybugs out there. That doesn't mean anything. There will be more. But that's also what the predators are for. They should take care of that. Or at least help slow things down. Pumpkin. Yeah, it's a nice night. He's been chilling out up here watching the snow. You like having your own little private escape? Hasn't it been nice, Pumpkin? I also remembered a few weeks ago that I left a video off talking about how the fish had laid eggs and never followed up. Yeah, they ate them. Not surprised by that. Angelfish, 
not the best parents, especially their first few goes, and I'm fine with that. Go ahead and eat your babies. I don't want to help you take care of them. I don't need more angelfish, so I'm fine with that. There are some new additions in here. I like to let the animals set in before we really talk about them, so you just stand back and have a look. There it is. The cribs, they had babies. Hard to see. Oh, you know, you can see them back there. There's the dad, Cribenzi Cichlid, hanging out with his babies. Only about a dozen, but it is their first go, so that's pretty good. Pardon the couch. There's always a cat on here. I bought a new love seat, and then it's ended up with a cover on it at all times because there's always hair sticking to the fabric, so I just figured throw a blanket over it. And then this showed up in the mail over the weekend, and I had been saying I'm not going to order more seeds, and then see that? That's what happened. Haven't placed the order though. I don't know if I'm going to. What I'm really excited about, the 2023 spring sales catalog. Now to be fair, these days we see it all online before we place the orders, right? But it's still, there's something nice about flipping through the pages, at least with a nursery that had been shopping from for a long time. In fact, when I gutted out a bunch of stuff when I was getting this room prepared, look what I found. See that? Those are mostly plant delight catalogs that go back to 2004, maybe 2006. It was fun flipping through those. This is a nursery where they will trial new plants and then introduce them. So sometimes they're the first place to sell them to the public. So there's like the Colocasia gigantea, the Thai giant. That's <laughs> the catalogs are in the closet. Well, I pointed to the closet. I have the catalog from where it was like this like new introduction, exciting plant. That's neat. Neat seeing those things. There's an agave in here that I am obsessed with. So obsessed with that I went to order it and then I looked at my uh, plant orders that I had already done. I had already ordered it. There it is. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it be? I'll put it up on the screen. How? What? How? Oh my god. Pumpkin. That's very impressive, Pumpkin. How'd you get in there? I'll pop it up on the screen so you can look at it. Isn't it just beautiful? Silvery blue variegation with those green edges. I cannot wait to get that one. And agaves are fun because they can live a really long time. That's a plant you'll have for a while. It's me trying to justify the amount of money that I spent on it. So they flower, of course, and then that's it for the agaves. Yeah, lots of fun stuff in here. Check out their website. And they have really put out a ton of cypripediums. The hardy lady slipper orchids. Really fun stuff. I've always wanted to go down that route, but they, ugh, they're so expensive. So, might be worth a try someday. I think that that's enough. As we've seen, I can't really do anything with the plants at this point, so maybe next week there'll be more to report on. Or maybe I'll film the orchid show and we'll go hang out at the botanical gardens. I think that might be fun. Should probably do that. That's probably what's going to happen. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Oh, and comment down below and say hi. Love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? Or, well, probably not much. Of course, keep on growing. Bye bye.